Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. We're in my kitchen right now in front of my refrigerator and I'm going to show you how to make these very decorative covers for your door handles. Now this is a reversible one. So right now I have Christmas fabric on one side, but then you can also put another color or another theme of fabric on the other side. This is a really quick project, really easy to do, so let's get started. I made my door handle covers to be an exact fit of the handle itself. So I measured the circumference of the handle. So take a tape measure, wrap it around your handle, and see what the circumference is, and then add two inches. So I'm giving you information based on mine. Mine uh, will finish out at six inches. So if you're gonna make just two door handle covers, you're gonna need four. If you wanna make three for a door pull on the freezer, then you'll need two more. So anywhere from four to six. Cut them six inches by 15. Uh, you'll also need cotton batting. You'll need two or three pieces, six inches by 15. And then Velcro, you'll need a 14 inch piece. Layer your fabrics. Place the cotton batting down first. Whatever fabric you want on the back side, place it front side up or the pretty side facing up. This is my fabric for the outside. Place the pretty side facing down. So now you're looking at the back. Go ahead and pin on the edges on all four edges. At one end, you wanna leave about a four inch opening. And you're gonna start stitching on this side of your first pin right here. And back stitch before you begin stitching. Stitch around all four edges, one quarter inch from the raw edge. When you come to corners, you wanna stop a quarter inch from this edge here, leave your needle down through your fabric and then lift your presser foot, turn your fabric, and continue stitching. I have a baby lock sewing machine, and on my baby lock, there is a line here that is a quarter inch line. So to make it easier to sew, all you need to do is place the edge of your fabric on that line and that way it's easier to uh, keep an even seam. So do a back stitch first, and then begin stitching around all four sides. When you get a quarter of an inch away, stop, leave your needle down, lift up the presser foot, turn your fabric, lower the presser foot, and begin stitching a quarter inch seam. So go around to all four sides and stitch. And it's always a good idea to remove your straight pins because you can break a needle. And then when you get to the end, you just want to back stitch. Before you turn it front side out, you want to trim some of the fabric off of the corners. So cut that corner down to about an eighth of an inch wide so that it looks like that. Then you want to cut a little bit off on each side. And you do this so that it's easier to get your corners to lay flatter. So you wanna do this at all four corners. Then reach inside and turn it front side out. So open it up and begin pushing the fabric through the opening. Now you want to reach inside with something relatively pointed but not too sharp because you don't want to poke through your fabric. And take it and begin to push against those corners to try to 
get them to come out a little bit more. It's not unusual for your corners with cotton batting in there to look a little stubby, but go into all of four corners and try to get them to come out as much as possible. After you've poked all your corners out, then go ahead and fold the opening edges inside a quarter of an inch and pin it closed. And then at your ironing board, go ahead and just press your edges real quick to get it nice and flat. Now stitch this opening closed. So stitch fairly close to the edge, not so close that you don't catch all of the layers. You want to make sure you get all of the layers of fabric as you're stitching it closed. When you get to the end here, then go ahead and back stitch. Now it's time to place the Velcro on and also stitch it on. So you place one piece of the Velcro on the top side, on one side. Then you're going to turn it over, go to the opposite side, and stitch the other piece of the Velcro here. So one's on the front and one's on the back on opposite sides. To stitch it on, you want to go on the outside edges and there's a little flat area where it doesn't have all the bumpy stuff on it. So that's where you would want to stitch. So go ahead and stitch along those edge, edges. Now to close it up, just fold it around the door handle and fold one side around and then wrap the other side around and there you go. If you want to decorate the whole kitchen, here you have three for your refrigerator and freezer drawer, but don't forget about your dishwasher handle and your oven door handles if you have more than one oven. So now I'm going to show you a little gift idea, so let me put these aside. You can also coordinate kitchen towels and add this in a little gift set. So you can just put these on top like this and then you can also make coordinating pot holders and then you can tie a ribbon around it and give it as a gift. And if you are interested in making a pot holder and a decorative kitchen towel, the links will be below your YouTube screen on a, the, a playlist you can click on and you can select whichever ones that you want. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making the video. I thought this was a really fun project. Thanks for watching and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing.